into consumer packaged goods. So consumer packaged goods, um, really quite a bit different from the previous category of consumer goods. These are typically um, products that are made uh, with in, in vast, vast quantities, such as this plastic bottle. So any small improvements that can be made uh, could have significant payoffs in terms of uh, productivity and uh, cost savings for the customer. So an example like this it uses a large number of abacus analysis features, such as being uh, large deformation. If you consider how that uh, very soft uh, mold, uh, excuse me, um, part on the interior is being expanded into a rigid type of mold. There's extreme deformation there. Um, there's a very complicated contact as it settles into the mold and uh, conforms to all of the folds and cavities. There's also fluid cavity uh, pressure that's driving this kind of deformation in the first place. And uh, on top of all of this, there's rigid and deformable bodies being considered at the same time. So customers doing this kind of analysis include Procter & Gamble, Tetra Pak, and Crown Packaging. And these are some, um, some leaders in the industry of consumer package, packaged goods using Abacus FEA on a regular basis. Next slide, please. Okay. In the area of high tech, this typically is what we uh, we're usually talking about um, electronic devices when we use this this name, high tech handheld devices. Um, so here we have an example of a cell phone drop test, but you could expand upon this to laptop drop test or any other kind of electronic device that has a, a hard packaging on the outside and is commonly transported and really potentially subject to uh, dropping from several feet onto a rigid or semi-rigid surface. So the abacus analysis features here uh, require dynamic impact, very large deformation again, that's a common theme that we see here when going to abacus FEA. And that dynamic impact together with the extent of the deformation uh, is, leads to general contact requirements. So we, we don't know where in the world this uh, assembly is going to experience contact, but it's probably going to be just about everywhere. And that's where Abacus is general contact, where you basically just say contact, yes, turn it on. Uh, let the FDA code deal with considering where contact is going to occur. That's the kind of capability that Abacus has. And there's also connectors with failure. And uh, yeah, if we click ahead just one more, you'll see that uh, we've got a box around this cell phone drop test area around the screen, and it's pointing to a smaller region that uh, shows some, uh, some stresses, stress contours being, being shown. And so what it's just an example of is this submodeling capability where you can take a very complex assembly and subject it, uh, make a fairly coarse model of it, and then obtain results for some kind of analysis situation, and, such as this drop test, but then do a submodel to get a much more detailed set of results on an area of interest, such as the cell phone LCD screen. And this is just an example of the kind of sophisticated techniques that can be employed when working with abacus analysis. And so customers that are using this kind of simulation technology are Motorola, Nokia, Canon, Intel, and HP, among others. So on to the next slide. We'll talk about the next industry. So industrial equipment is the next topic. Here's an example of a backhoe which, as you can imagine, has a number of complexities quite different from the areas that we talked about previously. First of all, there's a large number of connectors and joints in this model. Again, large displacement, large deformation, and there's kinematics being considered along with dynamics. So you have simple just motion as well as dynamics such as impact and interactions among various components. 
There's also another aspect of this, if you want to really talk about realistic simulation, that has to do with modeling the interaction between the soil and the backhoe uh, shovel. So you've got, on the right-hand side at the bottom of your screen, the ability to model that kind of interaction. And of course, the materials associated with the two kinds of uh, assemblies, if you will, the backhoe and the soil, are extremely different. And it, in it involves a large amount of contact, as well as this, uh, in this case, we used CEL, or coupled Eulerian Lagrangian techniques, to model that soil and its interaction with the backhoe. So quite sophisticated analysis techniques being brought to you through Abacus technology here. And companies that perform this kind of simulation regularly include Caterpillar and Hitachi, among others. Next slide, please. And the, the final area that I would like to talk about is multi-physics analysis. It's really a cross-industry kind of effort. And um, it involves coupling multiple uh, field equations together through Abacus. So the first one I'll just mention of, of these six that are shown here is thermal mechanical analysis and this ball grid array for electronics devices. Here you have. Um, uh, heat transfer kind of equations being solved simultaneously together with structural mechanics equations uh, to come up with a fully coupled kind of simulation. Uh, the next one I'll talk about, if you click ahead, is fluid mechanical simulation. So at the bottom of your screen, we have an example of a drop test for a bottle drop. Um, here you can take a bottle which has you know, its own set of material properties and complexities, and inside of this bottle, uh, is, of course, in this case, water, but it's not, com it's sloshing around. It's not fully uh, f forming to the cavity. So when you drop this, it's not just the impact of the bottle with the pavement, for example. It's the bottle and the fluid sloshing around and all the mass that is associated with it that is all coming into play. And the final one is uh, on the right-hand side at the bottom, the earthen dam. This is uh, more of a civil engineering kind of analysis. You can see the scale is completely different from the other two um, ones that I mentioned. And this would be on the order of hundreds of meters, probably. And looking at an earthen dam kind of simulation where there's structural poor fluid diffusion. So this hopefully gives you a good sense of the breadth and depth of the Abacus FEA capabilities. So if you think about taking that breadth and depth and bringing that to people working with SOLIDWORKS uh, modeling, uh, you can just imagine how far you could go. So with that, I'll conclude my portion of this presentation and hand it over to Atul to talk more specifically about his usage of Abacus and his R&D efforts. Thank you, John, and hello, everyone. My name is Atul Gupta, and I work in the endovascular R&D group at Medtronic. In this presentation, I will talk about the use of Abacus and its integration with SOLIDWORKS in our group. On to the next slide, please. Let me first give a brief overview of the disease state and the device we work on. Aneurysm is an abnormal widening or ballooning of a portion of an artery due to weakness in its walls. This could lead to rupture of the vessel if not treated in a timely manner. Figure on top right shows aneurysm in the lower chest region and abdominal regions of aorta. And aorta is the largest blood carrying vessel in the human body. Aneurysm is an asymptomatic disease which could only be detected through ultrasound or CT scan. Treatment options include surgery or endovascular repair. The surgical procedure is quite invasive and involves a large incision. During surgery, the diseased portion of vessel is replaced with, a, uh, with an artificial tube called a graft. Another option is endovascular aneurysm repair, or EVAR, in which a stent graft is placed at the aneurysm site by inserting a delivery catheter 
through a small incision at the groin region. Our group makes UR devices. Figure at the bottom left shows thoracic stain graft and bottom right shows abdominal stain graft after implantation. These stain grafts provide a conduit for blood flow, isolating aneurysm, and preventing any further enlargement of aneurysm sac due to blood pressure. The tortuosity of vessel and deployment accuracy makes EVA procedure challenging. In addition, the stand graft should be tested to perform well for at least 400 million pulsatile cycles, equivalent to 10 years of pulsatile loading due to heartbeat. Next slide, please. We use several modeling tools to design these devices. For CAD, that is generating parts, assemblies, and drawings, our designers use SOLIDWORKS. There are approximately 60 users, and the number is growing each year. For computational modeling and simulation, we use Abacus. The applications range from structural analysis for obtaining deformation, stresses, and strains on the various components of delivery system and the stand graph, to flow analysis and FSI for modeling blood flow, and interaction with the vessel. We have five users, including designers and full-time analysts, with experience level ranging from beginner to advanced user for Abacus. Since we use SOLIDWORKS for creating geometry, we use Abacus associative interface extensively to transfer geometry from SOLIDWORKS to Abacus for simulations. The associative interface also allows us to update parts after design changes. Therefore, it enables seamless integration of abacus analysis tools in our SOLIDWORKS design framework. Next slide, please. This slide explains what type of computational modeling we perform. Our use of computational modeling can be divided into four main categories. Firstly, we use FEA in the early phase of design process. These analyses precede any actual prototyping. FEA helps us at this stage to give us an estimate of whether current design would satisfy our design specifications and any critical performance specifications. Fast turnaround time in this case helps us reduce product development cycle. We also use FEA to run virtual DOEs and other optimizations to further refine our initial design. We take advantage of scripting environment of Abacus to perform this task. Second category is to evaluate fatigue and durability performance of new or existing products. As I mentioned in the previous slide, that our devices need to be tested for at least 10 years of fatigue life, equal to 400 million cycles. And these tests could take two to five months using accelerated bench tests. Therefore, it is practically impossible to run fatigue tests on all the variations of our devices. So here, FEA helps us in calculating fatigue safety factors for our devices based on the stress or strain quantities and comparing those to endurance limit for that material. This way, we can identify components with lower safety factors and test them under accelerated fatigue to ensure durability. Computational modeling also helps us with simulating some loading scenarios which could not be run on bench due to their complexity or scenarios which were not envisioned during the original design. Another place where we use FEA is for root cause analysis. Sometimes when we get device failure during testing or in vivo environment, then we use FEA to model scenario which could result in failure in that particular region. This helps us in determining the cause of failure, and we can use this information to improve our existing design. Finally, we also use computational